Dear students, in this module 12, we will discuss and comprehend the Carrado Gini theory. According to Gini, population growth tends to follow an evolution path which is similar to that of the life cycle of an individual passing through various stages of development, maturation, process of maturing and involution or the state of being involved. We will briefly elaborate this theory here. A biological theory of population was put forward by Corrado Guinea during the period 1884 to 1965, an Italian statistician, demographer, sociologist and biologist. This theory known as the cyclical theory of population and states that population growth tends to follow an evolution path which is similar to that of the life cycle of an individual passing through various stages of development, maturation that is process of maturing and involution or the state of being involved. Corrado Gini was just 20 years, 80 years of old when he first elaborated his cyclical theory of populations. Let us read the sentences where he introduced his core ideas starting with the analogy between population and organisms and the role of lower social classes in promoting population renewal. The populations currently dominant in all countries do not constitute the direct descendants of dominant populations in times past. The explanation is simple. The individuals of a society that is the cells of an organism are endowed with a certain reproductive power. What is not commonly evaluated is its magnitude. If differences depended merely on chance, there would follow variations without rules from one generation to the next. Instead, the differences are continuous and in evolution. This suggests a constant relationship between the different reproduction rates of individuals and a certain circumstances. This circumstance cannot be pinpointed with certainty. It is wealth, it is degree of culture, it is intelligence, it is refinement. It is all these things together, but it does not coincide with any of them. It is what we are accustomed to designating with the expression civilization. The greater or lesser dependence of our activity upon the primordial and instinctive needs of the organism rather than on centuries old needs and effects which may be said to be more elevated than the psyche and the senses. Those people belonging to higher up in the social ladder, those forming the upper classes generally have a much reproductive reproduction rate than those who are in the lower ladder. Each nation thus figures at a certain moment in world history almost exclusively for what their managing classes are and what they are worth, but its future depends instead directly on what other classes which currently yield negligible influence will be and what they are worth. In 1929, Corrado Guinea was invited to Chicago by the prestigious Harris Foundation to lecture on his cyclical theory of populations. The reaction to his lectures at conferences published later in the volume, Birth, Evolution and Death of Populations, 1930, by the American scientific community was surprisingly negative. The criticisms were harsh. In 1931, Edward Ritter, then president of the American Sociological Society, qualifies Guinea's approach as anecdotal, scientifically vulnerable due to the lack of direction from reality and supported by a chaotic combination of information from various sources, both historical or biological and statistical. In most cases, contradictory or irrelevant. Most of all, as Reuter points out, the approach was 
टोटोलॉजिकल और इवन मैजिकल ए कॉज आउटसाइड ऑफ द फिनमिन इज पॉजिटेड टू एक्सप्लेन एकनॉमिक सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल रियालिटी एंड द कॉज इज आउटसाइड ऑफ फैक्ट्स whether it is located in biology or providence it needs to be mentioned that in general biological theories have not been accepted as sufficient explanation of population since as has been pointed out by social and cultural theories social and cultural factors are equally important in the growth of population fertility is not some mere biological phenomena but very much influenced by social and cultural factors and in summary we can suggest that the gini theory has brought very well to link it up how the biological aspects have played an important role in understanding the fertility behavior but however over a period it is clearly worked out that besides biological theory there are social cultural aspects also need to be understood to have a comprehensive and holistic way of understanding the fertility behavior merely linking the biological aspects alone will not be sufficient whereas the socio cultural importance of these factors also have to be understood that is how the subsequent theories have started bringing out the economical social and cultural factors how besides the biological aspects of understanding the human reproduction are are very important in explaining the fertility and fecundity aspects of the population dear students as part of our understanding of biological theories the other dimension to the biological theory was postulated by herbert spencer and this is going to be covered in this module according to spencer that fecundity decreases when the complexity of life increases further he said that children survival status will be low when couple has large number of children and child survival status will be high when couple has small number of children will briefly elaborate this theory in this module herbert spencer in the period of 1820 to 1903 was an english philosopher biologist anthropologist sociologist and a classical liberal political theorist of the victorian era he was born into a family of the british aristocracy spencer was sickly in his youth all eight of his other siblings dying at a young age his constitution remained weak throughout his life and he would later suffer from nervous breakdowns which he never recovered from and he wandered about london never in a complete state of good health in 1880 herbert spencer postulated that fertility increases in response to the progress made by society and that in fact is a great agency for the advancement of mankind he however went on to add that when population growth becomes excessive and threatens the very existence of the human species individualization steps in and resolves all these difficulties the biological theory of population or natural theory of population by spencer clearly brings out this relationships herbert spencer has propounded the biological theory of population in his book called the principles of biology in which he argued that fecundity decreases when the complexity of life increases according to him changes in the growth of population occur due to natural change in the reproductive capacity of human beings thus his theory is known as the natural theory of population which is like the theories of sadler and double day spencer believed that there exists antagonism between individualization or survival and genesis that is reproduction in other words 
when more energy has been utilized for one's self development the energy available for reproduction will be less and consequently population growth will be less thus as society develops for one's success and survival that is individualization life becomes more complex which results in reduction in the capacity of reproduction this is based on the observation that fertility is more in rural individuals whose life is not complex while fertility is low in an industrial society where life is more complex and there are more pressures in life the four situations which explain the relation between individualization and genesis are explained below number 1 the individuation or survival will automatically low when there is high genesis of or reproduction that means couple will have a large number of children when fertility is high then the survival of children will be low with this situation we find among the poor that is characterized by low socio economic status and high fertility number 2 category in this regard is the genesis or reproduction will be low when there is high individuation that is survival this situation means couple will have small number of children when fertility is low then the survival of children will be high we find this situation among the rich especially like those whose characteristics are high socio economic status and low fertility the other three categorization is the individuation that is survival will improve when the genesis or reproduction is low this reflects increasing socio economic status and lowering of fertility and the last fourth category is depicts that the genesis or reproduction will be high when the individuation or survival is low in poor people we find less individuation or survival and more genesis that is reproduction this is the reverse of characteristic of one or we can say that higher the fertility lower is the socio economic status moreover because of high fertility individuation or survival will be low and therefore the death rate will increase at the same time because of low individuation or survival the life expectancy will decrease according to spencer life expectancy can increase when the birth rate decreases spencer's theory of population is based on the evolution theory according to spencer fertility rate is higher in small creatures in his own words the minutest organisms multiply asexually without sex in their millions many small cells do not reach maturity therefore small cells grow in number twice or thrice the population will rapidly increases and multiply itself small compound cells multiply by the thousands while big compound cells in hundreds still bigger cells lose their productive capacity Spencer used this analogy to explain the fertility of human beings. According to Spencer, there are three groups of people. Number one, poor people who live a simple life and whose fertility is higher. Number two, middle class people whose fertility is correspondingly lower. Number three, people 
who live developed or complex lives whose fertility is often low according to spencer in societies where people especially women are educated and belong to rich families the reproductive power is low as compared to the poor who are uneducated and whose reproductive power is high in his own words spencer has highlighted on these lines i quote in its full sense the reproductive power means the power to bear a well developed infant and to supply that infant with the natural food for the natural period most of the flat chested girls who survive their high pressure education are incompetent to do this were their fertility measured by the number of children they could rear without artificial aid they would prove relatively very infertile spencer believed that if population increases society would get more manpower with which more natural resources can be exploited which would result in better socio economic and cultural standards of the people thus he was of the opinion that an increase in population was beneficial rather than harmful further as per spencer a determining factor for birth and death rates is longevity life expectancy increases as death rates decrease and life becomes more complex he therefore suggested increasing life expectancy to reduce the birth rate spencer's theory of population has been criticized on the following counts number 1 spencer's population theory cannot be called a theory in the true sense of the expression it is only proposition based on a few observations of the natural world this is one of the strongest criticisms on spencer's theory the number 2 criticism is spencer's view that fertility decreases with increasing complexity of the organisms is not supported by empirical evidence rich families or industrialized societies in many places have high fertility third criticism is the problem of population growth itself is a complex phenomenon and therefore cannot be explained in purely biological terms number 4 spencer's view that educated women whose individualization is high would prove relatively infertile is not realistic even educated women have high reproductive power the fifth criticism is spencer's theory that fertility is affected by the natural process of individualization has no justification because when spencer propounded this theory the birth rate was high in the western countries in general biological theories have not been accepted as a sufficient explanation of population since as has been pointed out by social and cultural theories social and cultural factors are equally important determinants of the growth of population fertility is not mere biological phenomena but is deeply influenced by social and cultural factors in this regard we need to understand that the major criticisms of spencer like that this is a not a theory in true sense of expression similarly his view that fertility decreases with increasing of increasing complexity of the organisms which is not supported by empirical evidence and the third one for instance the problem of population growth itself is a complex phenomenon and thereby purely through biological terms alone cannot be explained and his view that educated women whose individualization is high would prove relatively infertile 
is also not realistic and lastly Spencer's theory that fertility is affected by the natural process of individualization has no justification because in, uh, in his own theory the birth rate was high in the western countries during that period. That is why based on the Spencer's theory we can conclude that biological theories have not been accepted as a sufficient explanation for population because there is a very clear cut understanding that is required that besides the biological issues various economical, social and cultural factors which are increasingly coming up and influencing the various determinants of the growth of population we need to understand. That is why the biological theories have a limitation in explaining their as a theories of population. That over a period the socio-cultural and economic aspects in explaining fertility, mortality, migration and population theories in general have shown a tremendous power of influence as theories that have increasingly coming up in a big way to explain this phenomena. That is why overall to be more comprehensive in explaining the determinants of growth of population, we need various dimensions of uh, aspects of human life, whether it is not only biological, but also social, economical, cultural and various other dimensions that are required. Then only a comprehensive picture can come out so that that will give a correct picture about interpretation of fertility and the fertility behavior of the people.